commandment I give you, that you love ye one another as I have loved you. By this, all men will know that you are my disciple, by the love that you have for one another. And the title of our revival is The Power of Love. That's our revival. But today, he told me to talk to you and explain to you what that love is all about. And there's four points that I want you to get out today's message. The first one being, you got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. The second one point you need to know is how to renew your mind. The third point is to go to work. For the Lord. The fourth point, and I want you to look at somebody and say, Payday is coming. Payday is coming. Payday is coming. I actually invite you to Matthew, the 25th chapter. And when you go there, look at the 31st, 34th. Verse, we're going to read and then we're going to jump down to the 41st verse. Matthew 25, verse 34, and then we'll jump down to 41. Matthew 25, verse 34. And it reads, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In verse 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You may take your seat. <laughs> the title of the message today, Payday, is coming. You see, I, I can remember when I, when I was a young man, and I, I was in the first down the service, they only paid us once a month, but we always look for that payday to come. And always at the beginning, end of the month, we were preparing of what we were going to do when we get paid. We were going to go out on the town and, and have a good time. We were talking about what we were going to do, how we were going to get ready. We were all getting prepared for that day because that was payday. And we wanted to let our light shine, wanted to look good in the eyesight of everybody that saw us. But see, this payday that I'm talking about today is not about you shining your light, but you shine the light of Jesus Christ so that others can see Jesus in him. A lot of people uh, don't understand what it says, the power of love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's right. And whosoever believes on him shall what? Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, people think life is in, in stuff and, and the things that you do, but life is not in stuff. It's in the peace that you have within this world that you walk. Uh, um, I heard a man say on the radio, uh, as long as I got food on the table, I got shoes on my feet. I got a roof over my head for my family. I got clothes for my family. <laughs> I got favor in God. And I got peace. And that's the kind of peace that we need to have and we serve God. But see, a lot of people don't understand what it means. The reckoning, the reckoning is coming to man. Man is going to wake up one day and find himself either in heaven or hell. Hello? But see, you got to understand who you are. 
Most people do not know who they are in the Lord. The Lord is not about fanfare. He has given us a job to do. We need to know who we are and what's our purpose. In Genesis 1, 26, he says, let us make man in our like image and in our likeness. You know what image means? That you are a carbon copy of God. And what did God do? God did nothing but what? Give. He said he gave his only begotten son. He said in his image and his likeness. His likeness is a spirit that we should have a spirit of him who made us. And then he told us that now, I, 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 I give you dominion over everything. Go you therefore and be what? Fruitful and multiply and replenish. God gave us an assignment that we are to find other Christians like us. He gave us us back in, in Genesis. And but Paul tells us in Romans 12 and 1 that uh, my, 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 my prayer for Israel is that they be saved. My prayer is that this world what? Be saved. But by a bad record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to us. What do you mean the zeal? A lot of people are jumping and raising and raising their hands and saying, Hallelujah, I love the Lord, but won't speak to you. Won't help your sisters and brothers out. But I can probably tell you, Jesus said, and when he comes, he's going to come and pay each one of us according to what our work be. So if you're not working for the Lord and doing what he say do, you're going to be in trouble. Right. Ephesians 2 and 10 tells us that we are his what? Workmanship. What that means? We are his hand and feet. People don't see Jesus coming down here working on this. He sees the Jesus in us doing what? His will. And we need to be about doing his will. And Matthew 21 and 18 tells you, if you dress up and looking good like that freight tree, you're on your way to hell. You need to have some substance with you. But the main thing I want you to know that the reckoning is coming. Reckoning is mean that you know what? You don't care. You, don't have, you need to have a regard for what God has already done for you. And I, I tell you not now, in his word, he says, if we look at this John, I mean Matthew, the 25th chapter, in the 31st verse. And see, this was Jesus speaking to his disciples. He was giving out parables, uh, instructing them on the way that they should live, and the way that we should live. And when this reads, when the Son of Man shall come into his glory, and all of the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. That means all people are going to be what? Gathered together. And he shall separate them one from another as a, sheep, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left hand. In other words, God knows what each one of us is doing today. That's right. Whether we're jumping and raising our hand, hollering, hollering hallelujah, or what we loving our sisters and brothers the way that God wants us to love. Right. If you look at your next verse, you will see what I'm saying. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry. How many people around us are hungry and we don't take time to feed them? But see, if you're doing God's will, you will feed those that are hungry. You will feed those that are in need. And he said, you gave me what? Me. I was thirsty and you gave me the drink. I was a, a stranger and you took me in. See, we got to be aware of those that are around us. They might be strangers to but we could be entertaining an angel of God. So that's why you got to show love to what? To everybody and do what the word of God say do. And he said, now, and uh, naked, and ye close me. See, we, we are doing the will of the Lord. We can stay on this right road and doing what God wants to do. People out here are hurting. But a lot of us turn our back on our sisters and brothers. 
But we want to say, glory, hallelujah, I love the Lord. How can you love the Lord whom you have not seen and hate your brother? Let me tell you something. The Bible says <laughs> the truth is not in you. You are a liar. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it says, I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee and hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave them drink, and when saw we thee a stranger and took him in, and naked and clothed thee, and when saw we saw, saw we thee sick or uh, in prison and came unto thee. And look what the king said. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Very, very, I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it to, unto one of the least of thee, my brethren, you have done it unto me. We got to understand this life that we live, what we do to one another, we're doing it to the Lord. If we don't help one another, then we're not on, in God's hand. God's army is always on the battlefield for others. We set aside ourselves and do for others. God so loved the world that he gave what? His only begotten son. That whosoever believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You have to believe it and do what God said do. Stop worrying about your problems and start helping somebody else with their problems. Yep. And you'll see a brighter light come on your life. And then, you know, look at this next word. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. Now we're talking about what? The goats. Those that are not busy doing God's word. He's going to say to them, those on the left hand, depart from me, from me ye cursed into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. That means you're not in the army of the Lord. You're out there doing the work of the devil, doing lying, cursing, and stealing, and doing the things that God don't want you to do, deceiving people. But we are supposed to be here to cover our sisters and brothers. If our sisters and brothers are on drugs, we are to gather around them with what? Love! Amen. And welcome them into the house of the Lord. And welcome them off the street and help them get themselves together. If we're our sisters and brothers in homosexuality, we're supposed to put our arms around and love them. Amen. And invite them. And show them love. That just because they are going wrong, you got to remember, once you were wrong, Amen. God had mercy on you. And he said, now, depart from me, ye curse into everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Sound like there's a hell to me, wouldn't you say? Uh, I can remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man. Uh, the La Lazarus was sick and ill, and all he desired was some crumbs of the rich man's table. But you know, sometimes when we're so high and mighty, we look down on the other folks. That's right. But the Bible says, that the Lazarus desired the crumbs from the first table. And he was so ill that the dog came and licked his wounds. You know, it's a, it's a crying shame. You got people around you that's down, and you be kicking them instead of helping them get up. We got to remember that we're here to help our sisters and brothers. We're here to love ye one another as I have loved you. And the Bible said, Lazarus died and went into the bosom of Abraham. But the rich man, he died. And when he opened up his eyes, in hell. <laughs> See, I don't want to wait till Peter come to find out where I'm going. I'm going to be doing the will of God. When he opened up his eyes, in hell, he said, can I go back and try it over again? The Bible said, once you cross over, it is over. No turn around. He said, well, can I just uh, go back and, and warn my sisters and brothers and let them know. No, you should have warned them why you were what? On earth. While you were here with them. But he said, but if you just have Lazarus come and just dip his finger into the bucket of water 
and touch my tongue. It'll be soon. That tells you that hell is what? Hell is hot. See, I don't know about you, but I don't want to, don't want to go to hell. Because that place is for the devil and his angels. I want to be and continue to be in the angel, uh, angel of the Lord. It says verse 42, for I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I come by to tell you, when somebody around you is hungry, physically, or either spiritually, we're supposed to be the meat givers. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because if you're not that meat giver, if you don't correct them, or call them, or tell them what is right for them to live, their blood will be upon your head. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, I was thirsting, and you gave me no drink. You see, we got to remind ourselves that God is a, a giver in dry places. So therefore, we got to be a giver in dry places. When people are dry in their life, don't know the right way to go. Right. We're supposed to give them something to drink. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. And he said, now, and I was stranger, and you took me not in. You know, sometimes people come around and we shun them because they don't look like us. They don't act like us. Or they don't talk like us. So we shun them and don't take them in. Ain't somebody take them into your church, in your house. But take them in and share the word of God with them. And it said, now, and you, you know, I was naked, and you clothed me not. And in prison, and you visit me not. I come out and tell you that we need to get busy doing the will of the Lord. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, where shall we be hungry and hunger and uh, thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Uh, then shall we, he answered them and saying, Never, never. I say unto you, and so, and as much as you did it not to the one of the least of these, you did not do it unto me. These shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous of life eternal. What I'm trying to tell you is time for us to get busy doing the will of the Lord. See, because the God that I serve is a giver in his life. He gave up his only begotten son so that you and I might have the right to the tree of life. Amen. But it's up to you to know who you are in the Lord, to know that you are uh, here to do his will and not your will. That you have come and must go to work to do the will of the Lord. Because one day, he said he's coming back as a thief in the night. And when I tell you, when a thief comes, he don't call you and tell you that he's coming to rob your house. You need to make sure that you have everything secure. Because you don't know man, know the day or hour that he's coming back to receive you. I'm telling you, you got to know the word for yourself. Like John told us in Revelation 22 and verse 10, he said, hide not the prophecy of this book. In other words, the thing in this Bible, we need to apply to our lives. We need to love one another. We need to help one another. We yes. need to exalt one another. We need to be there yes. for our sister and brother. Amen. And he said, now, he that is filthy, let him stay filthy still. Oh, no. He that is unjust, yes. let him stay unjust still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. For I come quickly with my reward to give to every man, woman, boy, or girl, according to what his work be. My question is, are you working for the Lord? Do you know what your purpose is? Are you looking for a payday? What kind of check are you going to receive when God comes? I ain't talking about no paper check. I ain't talking about no cash. I ain't talking about nothing in the bank. But do you know what your name is in the Lamb Book of Life? I'm talking about Mary's baby, Jesus Christ. It's time for us to get busy. Because the Bible says he came down through 42 generations. He walked on the earth for 33 years teaching us 
how to love you one another for three years. Telling us to watch the feet of our sisters and brothers, to help one another. But everybody has gotten on the phrase that all they word is about themselves. But I tell you, he's coming back. And when he come, we're all going to get paid. And the Bible says he came to his own, but his own did not recognize him. The light came to the darkness, but the darkness didn't comprehend him. He rolled into the rooms on one Friday evening on a donkey. And they were laying down palm trees. They were laying down their clothes and hollering, hold down, hold down to the highest. But the next place is the same one that was hollering, hold down, saying, crucify him, crucify him. And they tell me they took him out of the garden of the center the Thursday night and took him to chaos house. They spit upon him, they beat him, and they slapped him around. Then they marched him over to Paul's house. And they talked about it. And Paul said, I'm going to wash my hands of this man, because they can't find nothing but love. And they took him back to Kay Appetite, and they beat up on him, and they spit up on him all night long. But early that Friday morning, they placed the old cross on his shoulder and headed him up to Calvary Hill. And the Bible said, on the way up, my father fell down. But for your sake and mine, he got up, and he made up to Calvary Hill. And he laid down his life. Laid down his life for the man that he loved and allowed him to put nails in the head and nails in the feet. And they stretched him wide and they hung him high. The Bible says he stayed on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. But before he gave up the ghost, he looked down and said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the Bible says he gave up the ghost and they pierced him in the side. And out came blood and water. And they took him down and they placed him in a barber tomb. The Bible says he stayed there all night Friday night, all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power so that you can love ye one another as he has loved us. By this, all men will know that you are.